let's talk about Ubuntu Server 2004 a little bit. Released somewhere around end of April 2020, it comes with kernel 5.4 and it is one of the Canonical's most secure and most stable operating systems. This LTS release comes with 5 years of support and security updates with the option for the customers to extend this by another 5 years. That would make a total of 10 years of support for production environments. Also, Ubuntu Server 2004 LTS comes with a few new features such as WiredGuard VPN, a new modern and fast VPN that uses state-of-the-art cryptography, is now added to the kernel as a module. Another new interesting feature is that the bootloader can now be installed on multiple disks, thus eliminating the single point of failure. I haven't tested this myself yet, but in all previous versions, I would have to manually install the grub bootloader on multiple disks, especially when doing some RAID setups, so that I could boot from any disk in case something went wrong. Ubuntu Server is also cloud optimized and provides additional flexibility for being customized in production environments with extra security features and kernel live patches. And with all that being said, let's jump to my virtual machine and do a test installation and see how it goes. Once you boot the system, you'll be welcomed by this Ubiquiti installer that is now the default in Ubuntu 2004. And you can't go back to the old Debian installer because Canonical no longer provides these alternative installer images. Like it or not, this is now the default, so you'll have to get used to it. Okay, so let's choose the language here first. And by the way, speaking of Subiquity, the installer can now actually auto-update itself. So this provides bug fixes and updates on features such as selection of server software, for example. So I will choose to update the installer here. And by the way, this only takes a few seconds. And there we go. So let's choose the keyboard layout here. And for network, I already have DHCP enabled, so I'll just select done. I don't use any proxy, so I'll leave it blank. And for the mirror, the suggested server is OK for me, so I'll select done. Next, we need to select the disk for the installation now. Let's actually check the disk partitioning utility here. And I'm going to choose Custom Storage Layout. And then choose to create a new GPT partition. And by the way, this utility seems a little bit simpler. And it also does some things automatically for you. I find that a little bit annoying. Like in this example, I'm creating a root partition here. And it automatically and so conveniently creates an EFI boot partition. So let's choose done and then continue. And now let's enter our profile information, the username, server name and the password. And here I will choose to install the OpenSSH server. And also the cool feature here is that you can import your existing SSH identities either from GitHub or launchpad and now we come to the part where we can use some of the canonical software automation magic called snaps well maybe for some i personally don't like snaps at all because they are a total mess for me now i get the idea behind snaps it's totally fine and it's appreciated you get an independent server app that lives inside its own environment with all of the dependencies, databases, software and libraries needed for it to function, but it is a waste of resources and space. Snaps are like shattered pieces of various types of glass glued together trying to be a container. I really don't want to sound negative, but this is not the best way of delivering software in my opinion, and I doubt it will ever be.
Now I have tested some of these snaps and I was disappointed. They really offer the easier route here. You need something quickly and boom, it's there. That's all fine, but when it comes to some specific client server applications, it's always better to install things from scratch and configure them yourself. Like, for example, I tried installing Nextcloud from Ubuntu Snaps and the package that I got installed on my server, not only it took a little bit of more resources, but it was also poorly optimized. I had to dive in deeply in the Snap and then locate and reconfigure many things from scratch, which in the end costed me more time and effort than installing and configuring the application myself from the repositories. It's always best to do your own thing and not to rely on ready-to-go snaps or flat packs or whatever, unless you have some very specific reason and need to do otherwise. Anyway, let's move on. So I'm just going to reboot the computer here. So here I have logged in into my server via SSH. Now, when there is a new version of Ubuntu server released, what I like to do first is to check how much memory it consumes out of the box, meaning when you do clean installation. And we can see that this one takes around 140, 150 megabytes. That is nearly twice as much compared to the previous version, and I can actually see why. It is precisely because of the snaps and the multi-path service. I think things like these should be optional and you should have the choice to select them during the installation process because not everybody needs or wants snaps and not everybody needs to use multi-path I.O. for block devices like different server nodes and storage arrays connected with SAN connections, for example. But I understand why they did it. Ubuntu Server is simply meant to be used in cloud environments, so these features are on by default because Canonical is very strongly focused on the cloud automation and IoT implementation. So, in this case, since I want a totally clean installation, I will actually remove the features I don't need like Snaps, Multipath, and the cloud in its service. The other alternative is maybe to try the network installer, but I always prefer the standard server ISO. So let's see what happens when we reboot the server. And look at that, 100 megabytes in use. We have actually freed around 40 megabytes. Well, that's not much anyway. You could probably fit them inside a modern calculator these days. But the point is having that clean installation out of the box when installing Ubuntu Server 2004 manually like this and not spinning a customized cloud image. Anyway, that was my quick glance at Ubuntu Server 2004 and I hope that you enjoyed this video.